and welcome back to Straight Talk. Everything raw, everything real, and everything unfiltered. Like you guys can tell, my lovely wife is not here today. She's gone for a mouth procedure. So Lord willingly, in the new week, she will be back with me and we can do another episode together. I am personally very much looking forward to that. However, in this session here today, we want to speak to the men specifically today. And I want to mention four things that hold men back. Now, obviously, this applies for females too. However, I'm a man and I want to speak to the men today. But if you are a female and you are watching this, you can most definitely share it with either your husband, your brother, all right, your sons, perhaps, Whatever men you have within your life, you are more than welcome to share it with them. So let's get into it. Number one, one thing that holds us back in life as men is when we play the blame game. All right. Blaming others is something that essentially holds us back. And we see this happen in the life of our original ancestor, a guy called Adam, like you guys well know, when both him as well as his wife ended up eating the fruit, instead of taking responsibility, instead of, you know, stepping up to the plate and saying, you know what, I was wrong, I messed up, I flopped, I failed, I made the mistake, I sinned, all right, I disobeyed you, God. He didn't take responsibility and he ended up blaming the woman in his life. And we see this happen so often within society. So if you want your life to progress as a man, if you want your life to move forward as a man, we need to learn to stop blaming others, even though other people maybe have hurt us, even though other people perhaps have abused you in some way, shape or form. It doesn't help that you blame others. We must learn to ultimately take responsibility. And responsibility essentially has got two words over there, right? Respond and ability. So we need to take responsibility by responding to the ability that God has essentially blessed us with. So the first one over there that holds us back in life is blaming others. And the solution is learning to take responsibility. All right. Second one, the second thing that holds us back as men in life is that of making excuses. And like we shared before in multiple videos by God's grace, that we need to learn to chuck up those juices to those excuses. I remember hearing a couple of years ago, a beautiful, beautiful saying and statement. It said, pride makes excuses. Humility makes adjustments. So we need to learn to stop making up excuses as to why we can't, why we haven't, and why we can't become A, B, C, D, and E, and why we can't do A, B, C, D, and E, F, G, H, I, J, K over there. We need to stop learning to make excuses and learn to make the necessary adjustments. And here's the good news. God, who is our our father wants to partner with you, wants to mentor you, help you, develop you, initiate you so you can be the man that he's called you to be. So you can step into the purpose that he has designed for your life, the mission that he has designed for your life. So number two, making up excuses. The uh, the solution over there is making adjustments. Stop making excuses as to why this and why that and why not and so forth. All right. Simply make the adjustments. Side note, learn to take action on what you have been neglecting. Number three, the third thing that holds us back in life as men is kind of like a three in one over here, which is pride, entitlement and victimhood. Here's the piece. All right. Here's the big idea. You cannot be a victim and a champion at the same time, all right? You're either going to be the one or you're going to be the other. And my hope is for you as men watching this video today that you would become the champion that God has called you to be, that you would become the man that God has called you to be, that you would become the warrior that God has called you to be. Not the one that worries, but the one who fights the good fight of faith, all right? And that is my hope for you. Here's, the, here's another little piece I want to share with you, and that is simply this. Stop wishing for less pride problems and simply get more wisdom from God. Because like you guys well know, problems is a part of life. It is a part of the game. It's like you trying to play a soccer game or a rugby game. Jan's busy agreeing over here at the back. All right. Let him just have his say over here. He wants to also be a part of this video. All righty. Jan, you good there, my boy? You good. Cool stuff. All right. So like, you know, in rugby, as well as in soccer, any contact sport, at some point you are going to get tackled. That is inevitable. Hence, our response matters. We need to learn to respond God's way and not our own way. Learn to be led by his spirit and not by our 
emotions, all right? So you got pride, entitlement, and victimhood. These are massive, massive issues. Pride, like you guys well know, pride comes before the fall, all right? Pride, if you operate with pride in your life, my friend, it is absolutely inevitable for destruction to enter into your life. Now, listen, I'm not talking about good pride. What, I'm, what do I mean by good pride? I'm talking about uh, when I refer to good pride, I'm referring to like, for example, I'm proud of my wife and the person that she's busy becoming. I'm proud of my precious daughter for having courage to go to school. Like I'm proud of those particular things over there. But you got bad pride where basically it's all about me, I, and mine. And it's a problem. It's an unholy trinity. And you don't want to be operating in that place little also side note over here what's the middle letter of the word pride it's i and i is the problem self is the problem because self is the opposite of love and love is what we've been called to operate in to have each other's backs and not to stab each other in the back and then lastly number four the fourth thing that holds us back my friend actually before i get into the fourth thing over there the solution to pride all right is learning to acknowledge our weaknesses right? Not all of us are strong in every single area. Some of you are a bit more, uh, take more leadership than others and so forth. Other people are slightly more passive and shy and timid, but you need to acknowledge your weakness, okay? Remember, your personality can never override the fruits of the Spirit. Because it is not your personality that's supposed to be Lord over our lives. It is Jesus Christ who is supposed to be Lord over our lives. Our personalities are never supposed to override the fruits of the Spirit. So it's about learning to acknowledge our weaknesses rather than operating uh, from, from a place of being rich in spirit. No, Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, not the poor financially, the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, for theirs is heaven's influence over their lives. So be willing to acknowledge your weaknesses so we can receive his strength because his grace is sufficient and his strength is perfected within our weaknesses. Therefore, let the weak say, I am strong but be willing to acknowledge your weaknesses over there and then lastly number four as we get into the fourth one all right which is a very very uh interesting one and one that i'm also very passionate about because i feel like a lot of men struggle with this myself too i've struggled with this multiple times and i'm learning all right by god's grace we're growing and that is the thing that the fourth thing that holds us back in life is that of being fake that of being fake, Fong Kong, all right? Don't be fake. Don't pretend as if everything's okay when in all essence things are not okay. Again, stop trying to build a life of dysfunction around your dysfunction and simply acknowledge the dysfunction, acknowledge the sin, acknowledge the failure, acknowledge the mistake, confess the mistake, confess the sin, all right? Repent of the sin over there and say, Lord, I don't want to live my life like that anymore. I want to live my life the way you've called me to live. I don't want to live my life in disobedience from you. I want to live my life in obedience towards you and be the man that you have called me to be. And guess what our father's going to do? He's going to come alongside you, my friend, and he's going to strengthen you and empower you to be the man that he's called you to be so that your life can move forward, so that your marriage can move forward, so that your kids' lives can move forward, so that you can ultimately leave a godly legacy rather than an ungodly legacy. So you can leave a heavenly legacy rather than a hellish legacy because you've been called my friend for a time such as this all right so acknowledge those weaknesses acknowledge those mistakes acknowledge that sin rather than building a life of dysfunction around that sin stop faking it until you make it no my friend acknowledge the dysfunction all right and repent of it and re be reconnected back to God through Jesus Christ being filled with the Holy Spirit and become the man that he has called you to be so that's it for today and straight talk over here uh, and i'm hoping that you guys have enjoyed it if you have uh, drop a comment down below which point stood out to you the most which one are you struggling with within your life right now and then invite the holy spirit say holy spirit i'm inviting you in to help me in that particular area because god doesn't want you living in your dysfunction my friend his plans for our lives are to prosper us not to harm us plans to give us a hope and a future listen to your father's voice and not the father of lies who keeps on lying to you all right who keeps on trying to steal from you and kill from you and destroy your life listen to your father come back into your father's arms religion says and i'll close with this religion says oh i messed up my dad's gonna kill me relationship says oh i messed up i need to speak to my father 
Your father, our father longs to hear from you and longs to have a relationship with you so he can empower you to become the courageous warrior and determined protector that he has essentially called you to be. So again, that's it for today, champs. Thank you for watching. Until next time, in between time, if you got something out of this, share this video far and wide, all right? Share it with the, the, the men in your family, friends that are men within your family over there. Share it with some woke men as well who most definitely need this. And then, yep, until next time, thank you for watching. And note today, Namsanje, that your voice matters.